So today we are constructing a rotation using a compass. All right, now before we do the construction, let's talk about our strategy here a little bit. We are going to be rotating this figure 90 degrees counterclockwise, so that's in this direction. I always like to put an arrow to remind me which way I'm going because it's easy to lose orientation when you're rotating. But we're rotating at 90 degrees counterclockwise about point P. So that means all the points of this triangle are going to rotate around point P in this direction. Okay, so before I start, the first thing I'm really going to do is take the distance from P to each vertex of my triangle. So we'll start with A here. And what I'm going to do is just going to swing an arc from it to represent the path of point A. Okay, so we know it's rotating 90 degrees counterclockwise about point P. So that means A is going to follow this path counterclockwise around point P. All right. And we could do the same thing with all the other points, right? So from P to C, I'll take that distance and swing an arc. So again, this is the path of point C. And then similarly for point B, I'll do the exact same thing. So the distance from P to B, swing an arc. And that's going to be the path of point B, all right? So each of these corners of my triangle are going to be following their little paths here, okay? Now, the question is, even though B is going to follow this path, when does it stop, all right? And that's where the 90 degrees comes in. So when is 90 degrees around point B? Well, it might help to illustrate this with a little right angle here. So here's P to B right here, okay? So 90 degrees will be, here's my right angle, when B follows this path, it'll stop right here, okay? And that's how we know it'll be 90 degrees because this angle from P to B and from P to where B prime's gonna end up, when that angle's 90 degrees, that's when we've rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. All right, and similarly, we'll do the same thing with C and A, all right? All right, here's where C prime's gonna end up. But, again, we're using construction. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to construct this perpendicular, okay? So we can construct the perpendicular directly on here, but I find it gets super messy and it's hard to kinda keep track of everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna construct a perpendicular up here and just duplicate the angle onto my diagram. All right, so up over here in the corner here, I'm just gonna draw a segment. It could be any segment, all right? And then I'm gonna construct a perpendicular bisector of the segment, just so I can have that right angle to duplicate. And if you can't remember how to construct a perpendicular bisector, check out one of my videos. I do have a video on constructing perpendicular bisectors, but it tends to be super quick because we don't have to adjust the compass to something specific, all right? But there's my perpendicular, okay? So what we're gonna do is take this angle here and duplicate it right here so that we know where B ends, okay? So here's P to B. And what I need to do is I need to duplicate this angle. So I'm gonna take my compass and on this angle here, I'll swing an arc, and I'll repeat that same arc over here off of point P. And then I'm gonna take the distance of my angle from one end of the arc to the other, right about there, that looks good. And then I'm gonna repeat it off of where I'm duplicating the angle, right there. And where those two, inter two arcs intersect, that's gonna be my right angle, my duplicated right angle. There we go. So I just duplicated this angle right here. So now I know where B prime is. B prime follows this path until it hits the right angle right there. I'll put it like right here. There we go, there's my B prime. Okay, now I can just repeat that same thing for C 
and I could repeat the same thing for A, but there is a faster way to do it. Okay? And it all comes down to what you know about rotations. When you rotate a triangle, we know that the distance from B to C, we know this distance here is not going to change when we rotate the triangle. All right? So there's a faster way to see, find C prime other than duplicating that right angle again. What I could do is just take this distance from B to C and then repeat it off of B prime. And notice where that arc intersects the path of C, that's going to be my C prime. Okay? But again, you could have just duplicated the angle and you would have got the exact same thing. Notice I get the exact same thing if I duplicate the angle. But isn't it a lot faster to just use the properties of what you know about rotations that that distance from B to C is not going to change when you rotate it because it's just one arc. Okay? Now, similarly, we could do the exact same thing for point A. So here's B. Here's the distance to A. And notice how A is a little bit in front of point B. See, here's the line from P to B. So it's a little in front of B. So when I repeat this distance off of B prime, I know A is going to be a little bit out in front of this line from P to B. So it's going to be out here somewhere. Whoops. I think my compass slipped a little bit. There we go. There it is. And where those two arcs intersect, that's my A prime. What can be a little confusing though, I will say, is see this distance from B to A? Technically, when we go off of B prime, this arc is actually gonna hit the path of A in two different spots, right? It's gonna hit down here, but if I continue this arc, it'll actually hit back here too. It also hits there too. So it can be a little confusing for people when you're constructing it because there's two different places A could potentially go, but only one place makes sense. Remember what we, what we said. A is out a little bit in front of this line, P to B. See how it's a little bit out in front of B from this line? So when we rotate it, it's also going to be a little bit out in front of this line, so up here. Otherwise, it'll be behind it. Behind it would be like maybe back here somewhere. All right. But if you're not sure, you can always just plot it and connect up the dots to see what the triangle looks like. Because remember, when you rotate it, the triangle should be congruent. And when I connect up the vertices of my triangle, see how it looks. It looks pretty good. The exact same triangle here, it's just rotated around point B. And if I want to confirm, here's C and C prime. I don't think my angle's long enough for A and A prime, but you can kind of see. Here's A, here's A prime. All right, so we've rotated that triangle 90 degrees. And again, if you want to just duplicate the right angle for all three vertices, it really wouldn't be that hard. You're only swinging, what, two arcs? It's just a lot faster by swinging one arc to find that other vertex, okay? So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math, and I will see you next time.